The WC, man. Y'all already know what this video is. I know what the video is about. LeBron James' response to Charles Barkley. Now, y'all know y'all know the WC, man. Y'all watch my videos. Y'all follow my channel. I didn't get to... I didn't get to 1K subscribers without going in on LeBron James a few times, okay? I didn't I didn't get there without going there, all right? So guess what? I'm going there today. Charles Barkley a couple of days ago on Inside the NBA. The question came up about LeBron and him going to, you know, uh, the front office and everything and saying that he needs more team uh more playmakers and Charles Barkley and the TNT cast with, uh, you know, Kennedy, the Jeff Smith and Charles, you know, and Charles and Shaq and, you know, they all went in and it seemed like Charles was the only one that kind of got ridiculed. Like, you know, Kenny kind of went at, Kenny kind of went at him, didn't say nothing about Kenny. Um, Charles went at him hard and then Shaq, Shaq kind of back, backpedaled, kind of back, you know, he kind of, he kind of backpedaled and sidestepped. He said it was, but he didn't go as hard on him. Because, of course, Shaq has played with this man. Shaq is, you know, NBA champion. Kenny's NBA champion. And Charles is probably one of the greatest players along with, Car you know, Carl Malone that's never won a championship, all right? That's a little bit of a history lesson for the, you know, some of the women that watch my videos because the majority of my followers are women. They know that, they you? All right, so getting back to what Charles says, Charles basically said, to, to kind of sum it up, he said that LeBron was whining, all right? He said he was basically a diva, all right? He said that, the, you know, Cleveland has the most expensive roster in the league right now, which they do, all right? They're basically the Yankees of the NBA. So all the guys that's on the team, LeBron basically gave the okay, the thumbs up for them to be there. That's basically what the, prom basically what the prom promise was when he came back to Cleveland, that he would have some type of say in, in, the, in the roster. Star player, you build a team around him. You know, Kyrie Irving, you know, it is what it is. But let me say it like this, all right? Let me let me read what he said, and then I'm going to say what I have to say about what he said about Charles Barkley, okay? All right, so this is what LeBron said. Quote, I'm not going to let him disrespect my legacy like that. I'm not the one who threw somebody out the window. I never spit on a kid. I never had unpaid debt and lost Vegas. I never said I'm not a role model. I never showed up to the All-Star game on Sunday because I was in Hold on. What? Because I was in Vegas all weekend partying. I got mixed up there. All I've done for my entire career is represent the NBA the right way. 14 years, never got into trouble, never disrespected the game. Break that. And then he said, "Go watch the 93 finals." When Paxton hit the shot, Barkley and Jordan were laughing and joking with each other during one of the games while someone was shooting a free throw in the finals. But, oh, nobody back then were friends, right? I added on that right there. Like I said, I'm paying for angels. And then he says, I'm tired of biting my tongue. There's a new sheriff in town, whatever the hell that means. So, basically... You know, he kind of goes off on, on Charles Barkley for making the statements that he that he made and everything. But nothing that Charles said or nothing that Chuck said was wrong about LeBron. LeBron is a diva. Um, you know, all the things that uh, eventually led to him getting back to Cleveland. You know, you guys you guys just don't know the half of, of the whole entire story. You guys don't know the half. Um, you know, my sources in Cleveland, this is what my sources in Cleveland told me. OK, the same sources that told me weeks in advance that LeBron was going to go back to Cleveland. All right. I was one of the first people on the on, in, on the net to break that news. As a matter of fact, um, you can go back and check it. But um, this is what they told me. They told me that LeBron said, that, oh, we we need to, you know, without J.R. Smith, man, we need to we, we need to trade for another, you know, a backup point guard or something. We got movable parts. Same team that traded for Cal Corver a couple weeks ago. I don't know why they would, wouldn't have traded for, you know, Dennis Schroeder, but they probably would have had to give up maybe draft picks in order to get Schroeder. Um, and plus, you know, they uh, the Hawks uh, extended Schroeder's uh, contract, so they weren't going to get him. So, you know, DJ Augustine was out there for them to go get. Um, they could have they could have went to go get Jameer Nelson from the Nuggets. He's not doing anything. He's not going to be going anywhere. 
They could have tried to go get Lou Williams from the Lakers, even though he's technically not a point guard. They could have went to go get Brandon Knight. Y'all, uh, like I'm, I'm naming off these names, and y'all know I know my basketball, all right? Y'all know that I know. So, you know, all this stuff here, man, that LeBron is saying about Charles Barkley, like I said, they said that his comments about, you know, uh, going out in public and talking to, you know, the media about his wants and needs for a backup point guard and playmaker was inappropriate. And this is inappropriate, too. Chuck did not come at, you know, a LeBron personally. He didn't attack him personally. And all the stuff that Charles has done, Charles is no angel. All right. Charles was it. I'm going to tell you like this. If Charles was a bad boy, then what the hell was what, what, what the hell was um a Dennis Rodman back in the day? You know what I'm saying? Charles Charles is a Charles is a boy scout comp compared to what Ron Artest did back in the early 2000s, okay? So, you know, he's trying to paint he's trying to paint, you know, Chuck out like Chuck was some type of bad guy or some ass wipe or something like that. And I'm like, LeBron LeBron is such of a diva. He's the biggest diva in the NBA. He's the biggest diva in professional sports. So as far as I'm concerned, all right? And Chuck, even though Chuck doesn't have the rings to speak for, Chuck has every right to come out and call this guy out. I've been waiting for somebody to call LeBron out on his stuff because he thinks is that he thinks that he's untouchable. LeBron is not untouchable. He's the greatest player in the NBA right now, best player in the NBA. But the man is not untouchable. All right. And his comments about Chuck were out of line. Chuck can't look. I'm gonna tell you like this. Chuck said. That, you know, anything that anybody else is thinking about the, uh, the situation. You got Kyrie Irving. You got Kevin Love. What the hell else do you need? All right? What the hell else did you need? When Della Vendova was uh, going out and si trying to sign with the Milwaukee Bucks, where the hell were you, LeBron? Where were you? What were you doing? Huh? What were you doing? You was hanging out with your posse. That's what, that's what you was doing. Instead of trying to focus in on repeating. What happened to Timothy Mozgov? Where's, where's Mozgov at? You guys think that Tristan Thompson, T Tristan Thompson could grab 20 boards a game? He's not built like that. He's not that guy. All right? LeBron needs to shut the hell up. All right? He really does. And then people like Chuck, there's, there, needs to be more, there needs to be more reporters like Chuck that come out and call this guy out for being the way that he is. He's a diva. You don't, you don't see Chris Paul coming out and saying, or going to Clipper management and saying, oh, we need to go get, um, you know, we need to go out and go get Carmelo. We need to go get Carmelo right now. And they do need him. The Clippers need Carmelo right now as bad as anybody does. They get Carmelo, they win the West. I don't care what any Warriors fan says. You bring back Chris Paul, healthy Chris Paul, with, with that core that they got there, you know, I think that they win the West, even though they don't have a bench. They go, they go out and they get Carmelo. That team is a super team. That team can take down LeBron those boys. Swapping love out for Anthony is not going to change nothing. Matter of fact, it's going to make it worse because Anthony is not a team player. He's never been, never will be. He's a me guy. Just like LeBron is starting to turn into a me guy. He doesn't, he doesn't do it on the court. The best player on the planet should not be asking for more help when you have two legitimate perennial all-stars already on your team. All right. What the hell did the LeBron think that this was? You have to compete. Nobody is just going to hand it over to you. And I'm going to tell you like this. I'll be one of the first people on the planet to tell you guys this now. The, the Golden State Warriors are not going to win the NBA championship this year. And I guarantee you that get me a dislike on this video. NBA history says it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not, it's not going to happen. That's what it, it, maybe it might happen. This, it might happen next season. You know what I'm saying? But it's not going to happen this season. And the way that LeBron is acting right now, the way that the Cavaliers are playing right now, they're probably not going to get out. They're probably not even going to reach the finals this year. All right? There's teams that's on the rise in the Eastern Conference. I'm going to wrap this video up. There's teams that's on the rise in the Eastern Conference that LeBron knows are getting stronger. They're getting better. Look at, look at what Boston is doing. If Boston could get, you know, a, 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 a four- and if you know what a four what a four is, if they can get a power forward, they can play half as decent. They can average a double double. All right. You know, Cleveland's in trouble. Same thing with Toronto. If Toronto can have, you know, develops a four. They can they can average a double double. 
Cleveland is in trouble. You look at the you look at the Wizards. You look at the Wizards, man. Let me hold on. Let me take the charger out because my phone just said it's going to overcharge. But you look at teams like the Wizards, who have one of the most balanced lineups in the league right now. John Wall's hitting a hitting a groove, starting to turn a corner. I mean, like I said, the Eastern Conference ain't no cakewalk for LeBron. I mean, he realizes it, but he shouldn't be afraid. He shouldn't have to go to management. He shouldn't have to go to the media. He shouldn't have to say nothing about playmakers when he's the best player on the world in the world playing with two other players that are perennial all-stars. You know what I'm saying? Y'all really got to look at what the man is saying. It's okay. Like You'd be like, okay, you're just throwing LeBron under the bus. Hell yeah, I'm going to throw him under the bus. You're the best player in the world. You complain about not having enough playmakers when you got two all-stars on your team, the highest, play, highest paid team in the, in the league, and you complaining? About what? What the hell are you complaining about? But yeah, man, um, it is what it is. Chuck was right. LeBron couldn't take the truth, so he responded like a diva. He should have did what he usually does. And then just like just take it out on the court. That's what he should have did. He shouldn't have said anything. You know what I'm saying? Because he knows that people like me, who are critical of him, all right, are going to come back and say, "Okay, well you're not a diva. Okay, well you just you just re, you re, just just you just reconfirmed what I already knew about you with this." So let me know how you guys feel down below, man, about LeBron and and all this other stuff. I'm a little late, so y'all might not care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all might not care because I'm a little late with this. The new sheriff in town, I don't know what the hell that means, man. You know what I'm saying? He cannot win this war with Charles Barkley or guys like Stephen A. Smith. He can't go back and forth with these guys, man. He's just got to play. That's what he's got to do. Until next time, folks. Peace out, man.